Howdy everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be analyzing the company Baidu. Now for all of those of you who may not know what this company is, it is essentially Google for China. So right then and there, it's going to give a lot of red flags similar to that of Alibaba, mainly because of the fact that it is a Chinese company and they could be delisted at any moment in time. However, seeing that the earnings are coming up on March 1st, I would like to see how this company's fundamentals actually match to the current share price. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Coming straight into the calculator, this company does not pay a dividend, so we got nothing to analyze when it comes to dividend. Ticker symbol of BIDU, Baidu, market cap of $53.2 billion, PE of 24.43. Now, what this PE is telling me is that based on their earnings, it's slightly overpriced. Normally, my metric is around 20. Anything 20 or below is a good buy. However, seeing that the current share price is $152 based on just earnings. It's pretty much telling me that it is slightly overpriced. Now we're going to take a look at other metrics and make an even more accurate assumption because for all we know, the PE might be telling you it's overpriced. However, with all the other metrics, it could be an absolute buy right now, right? So that's just something to take a look at. Now, seeing that this company does not pay a dividend, all of their five-year average free cash flow is going straight into themselves, reinvesting in themselves, paying down debt. They don't pay a dividend, but they are, but they could make acquisitions. Therefore, this $3.4 billion is strictly for them. And well, they have a pretty good chance of growing further into the future. Now let's take a look at the fundamentals, starting off with a net income five years ago of $1.7 billion to one year ago of $3.4 billion, which is an increase of 105%. Now the obvious thing right here is that two years ago, they did really, really poorly to around $300 million. Now guys, just to put it into perspective, these fundamentals are based off of 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 numbers. They do not have 2021 numbers yet, so just letting you know that this two years ago is not 2020, but 2019. So I don't necessarily know what happened in 2019 that caused this huge decrease in their net income. Definitely something to take a look at if you're interested in this company. But nonetheless, this is an outlier. I don't know if it's good or bad. Again, something to definitely take a look at on your own. Next, we got the free cash flow, the lifeblood of the company. Cash from operations minus your capital expenditures or plus since capital expenditures are already negative. Five years ago of $2.6 billion to one year ago of $2.9 billion or around $3 billion actually. Let's round up to $3 billion, which is an increase of around 11% with an average five-year free cash flow as we saw around $3.4 billion. Now, the elephant in the room here is that they are actually going down pretty drastically and pretty consistently as well. From five years ago to four years ago, they did have a huge increase, but then ever since they have been slowly declining. Again, I don't necessarily know what's causing this. I'm not a huge fan when it comes to Chinese companies. I do not like to invest in Chinese companies because of the sole reason that they could be delisted at any moment in time because of the Chinese Communist Party. Therefore, I'm not really a huge expert on this. If any of you guys are an expert on Chinese companies and you know why this is happening and if you don't think that's a, a big deal, then by all means, this is still a positive metric because it is higher from five years ago. However, looking at the bigger picture, they are decreasing in the free cash flow. Now let's take a look at the revenue. Five years ago of $10 billion to one year ago of $16 billion, which is an increase of 61.44%. And unlike the other two metrics, this has actually been increasing pretty steadily within the past five years from again, 10 to 13 to 15 to 50.4 and now to 16.4. Really nice revenue number and a positive metric nonetheless. Now let's take a look at the total assets minus total liabilities. This metric pretty much tells you if they were to liquidate all of their assets, would they be able to cover their debt slash liabilities? And as you can see right here, when it comes to this, currently they have around $22 billion after paying these liabilities, meaning that they could 100% cover their liabilities. Not only have they been positive within the past five years, they have also consistently increased their assets and lowering their liabilities to give them an even more cushion just in case something bad were to happen with the economy. 
The average total assets is around $24 billion. The average total liability is around $9.6 billion. And average assets minus the average liabilities, we get around $14.6 billion. Now let's take a look at the silent killer when it comes to investing, a metric that people don't even know. I personally didn't even know this metric when I first heard that. I'm like, well, shares outstanding. What is that? What is shares outstanding? What is floating shares? By the way, that's another metric as well that isn't really necessary to look at but it's always good to know right the more you know the better but shares of standing is the silent killer when it comes to investing because this tells you whether or not the company is diluting you as the investor and as you can see right here when it comes to baidu it's kind of it's kind of iffy right it's it looks it looks bad but at the same time we have a positive metric for some reason i don't necessarily know what's happening here five years ago of 347 million shares to today of 347 million shares. Now, the exact number is 347.3 and 347.2. Now, on the five year, this is a decrease of 0.03%. However, from the previous year to the current year, so from year one to the current year, they did increase it around 3%. Now, this is still a positive metric because within the past five years, it did go down, not by a huge number. I would consider this personally flat. This is neither positive nor negative however definitely something to take a look at this previous to current year because if they continue to increase shares next year then this would 100 percent be a negative metric next we take a look at the cash and equivalents and the reason why i like to take a look at this is because we need to eventually adjust for debt when it comes to making a target share price right and the way we do this is we take the cash they have on hand and their net debt add them together and put that into the market cap that the discounted free cash flow calculator does. And if a company has more cash than debt, that means that their target share price adjusting for debt will actually go higher. If they have more debt than cash, then the target share price goes lower. So I like to see how much cash they have on hand just so that way we see, well, how much cash they have on hand, right? Currently, Baidu has $6.3 billion in cash and equivalents with an average cash of around $4 billion. Now we need to make some assumptions, guys. Let's make a low, median, and high assumption using three different factors, growth, predicted share buyback, and required rate of return. For all of them, I'm going to use the same required rate of return. When it comes to the growth, people usually ask me, where am I getting this growth from? Well, if we take a look at Seeking Alpha at the growth tab, I like to take a look at the revenue growth year over year and the revenue growth forward. And as you can see right here, we see 15 and 12. My job as an investor is to be conservative, to take the worst case scenario and apply it to the future to tell me what I should be paying for something today. That's the only reason why I like to use the revenue growth year over year and the revenue growth forward to make my own growth assumptions. As you can see right here, my highest growth assumption is 9%, which is lower than that of the forward revenue growth and the revenue growth year over year. I'm doing this on purpose because I'm trying to be conservative. Now, the predicted share buybacks I get from the shares outstanding that we just saw in the shares outstanding graph. I like to somewhat make an assumption as to what they could do in the future based on what they have done in the past. So that's essentially where I'm getting my assumptions from. But nonetheless, for the low assumption, I'm going to assume a growth of 7% with a projected share buyback of negative 1%. So I'm saying that they're going to issue shares. If you put a negative projected share buyback here, this means that they are going to issue shares. Now, they have been lowering them. However, we just saw that from the previous to the current year, they did go up, right? So I'm going to say that they're not going to go up as much as 3% next year, but they might issue a little bit of shares at around 1%. This comes to a target share price of $399. For the median assumption, I'm going to say a growth of 8%. And I'm going to say that they don't buy back shares and they don't issue shares. They remain at zero. This comes to a target share price of $425.28. And lastly, for the high assumption, I'm going to assume a growth of 9% with a 1% share buyback. This comes out to be $453.30. Now we need to adjust for debt. This is exactly what I just explained. We need to adjust for debt just so that we get an accurate representation of the value of the company. And in doing so, we saw that these guys have like little to no debt, meaning that this number is going to go up from the target share price, not adjusting for debt because they probably have more cash than debt on hand. Therefore, for the target share price, not adjusting for debt for the low assumption, we get 
a price of $416.66. For the media assumption, we get $443.46. And for that assumption, we get $472.04. Now, me personally, I like to add a margin of safety. Now, you guys don't necessarily have to do this. The reason why I like to do this is because the more you pay for something today, the less returns you're going to get in the future. Therefore, I want to add a margin of safety of 5, 10, and 15%. You guys don't necessarily have to follow this. If by some reason we fall under this, then great. If we don't, then, you know, sometimes I buy things at the target share price, not adjusting for debt, right? It really is up to you. But nonetheless, for the low assumption, adjusting, but nonetheless, for the low assumption, adding a margin of safety, we would like to buy between $354 all the way up to $396. For the media assumption, we would like to buy between $377 all the way up to $421. And for that assumption, we would like to buy between $401 all the way up to $448. Guys, the current share price is $152. So any way you look at this, this is a really, really cheap buy. And you're probably wondering, how can these numbers be so high? This is insane. This is probably wrong, right? Well, let me just take you on a trip to the past and see where this company has actually reached in the past. And as you can see right here, the highest that they've ever gotten, guys, is $343, $344 and like a penny, $344.30. And even though this was an outlier in around what, February 22nd, 2021, they have fallen ever since. So as you can see here, assuming that they never fell, we are about $100 from my target share prices. The reason why they fell, in my personal opinion, has to do with the fact that China's communist, they could delist them at any time. So I think that's the reason why Baba fell from what, like $300, $350 all the way up to like 120. So it really is what it is. And me personally, I think this company should be worth around 400 bucks, right? Curse of 152. So if you believe my assumptions, then by all means, this is an absolute buy. Again, if you believe my assumptions, I'm not going to tell you what to buy. I never tell anybody what to buy. I'm just giving you the raw numbers, the raw data, and my assumptions as to what I would pay for if I wanted to buy this company. If you do not agree with them, I really do hope that you don't agree with them actually, because I have this calculator available for free in my discounted free cash flow calculator video. It's for free. Anybody can have it. All I ask for in return, guys, is like, subscribe, comment. Help me out with my growth on my channel. We are almost to 400 subs. I would love to get to 500 subs by the end of March. So that way I can start making community posts, asking you guys like which companies I should analyze next and like what you guys want to see, what kind of topics. That'd be awesome. I would love to communicate more with all of you. So that's all I'm really asking for, guys. This calculator is free. Like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, share. That's about it if you enjoy this content. All in all, when it comes to Baidu, I'm going to give the same reason I gave with Baba. They are, they are a Chinese company. They are the Google of China, essentially. So if you believe that Baidu is actually going to be just like Google, then this is an absolute buy. I mean, Google's stock price right now is like 2,200, right? So Baidu might have this potential in the future. Me personally, the fact that they have the communist boot over them, it really is difficult for me to put money into them because I just don't trust the, the communist Chinese. I really, really don't. But that pretty much does it for this episode. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help over the algorithm on YouTube. You can follow me on my new tech sites of BitChu, Odyssey, and Rumble, where in addition to my stock analysis videos and crypto videos, you will find exclusives as well. And in regards to YouTube and Rumble, I have a Let's Play channel where I'm currently playing through Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if you want to catch that, click the link in the description below. Also, guys, I am probably going to put out a video tomorrow or Wednesday regarding the whole crypto content because, well, things are going to change regarding that crypto content. So if you guys are a fan of that, be on the lookout for that. With that said, peace out, and I will see you all in the next stock analysis video.